So I think we we should start now. Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth edition of our online discussion a feminist exploration and today we are talking about intersectionality. My name is Ines Kappert. I'm the head of the Nirvana Institute for Feminism and Gender Democracy based in Berlin. Our expert today is Peggy Piescher, consultant for intersectionality and decolonization at the German Federal Agency for Civic Education. And I am not um, I'm not sure if I'm, can you hear me? Yes. All right, yes. sorry, we sorry, can... I lost. Um, so, um, very warm welcome. Sorry, there was a technical problem. Um, um, it, Cause I lost the picture. Okay, but I, I'll find it again, I hope. Um, um, so, um, let me welcome you again. My name is Ines Kappert and um, I was just about in, uh, introducing you to our expert, Peggy Piesche. Peggy Piesche yep. is consultant for intersectionality and decolonization at the German Federal Agency for Civic Education. And I am not exaggerating when I say that Peggy Piesche is one of the most influential feminist and anti-racist anti -racist intellectuals and activists in Germany. My institute, Gunderwerner Institute, um, is very proud to host this event together with Heinrich Böll Foundation, European Union, based in Brussels. But there are many hats behind this series. We are a network in the making, combining the work of feminist scholars, activists and advocates to collectively fight the backlash against reproductive justice, women and all genders that are not read as naturally male. Our goal is to create a strong bond of feminist solidarity all over Europe and beyond. And we want to discuss feminist political strategies to listen and to learn from marginalized people and perspectives in order to strengthen them and thus democracy. Please note that this event will be recorded. You will be able to watch all the editions of this series only shortly afterwards on the YouTube channel of Heinrich Böll Foundation. And just to give you a brief introduction to the context um, in our lecture today will take place in our first event. We had a conversation with three amazing intersectional scholars, activists and authors reflecting on the challenges of COVID-19, of course, from a feminist point of view. The author later, Hong Fincher, was reflecting on the situation in China. Professor Montserrat Zagou on the situation in Costa Rica and the activist and advocate Olive Uba Maria on Rwanda. Our last lecture um, was turning around the history of demography, a topic more and more popular in recent policy debates in the EU. Um, we learned that demography as a, as a, as a field can be very useful um, for feminist struggles because it can provide us with very useful data and knowledge, but at the same time it is strongly instrumentalized by anti-feminist players also in the context of the EU. So we need to be very careful here. Now, spanning back to our first lecture, we will acquire an insight why intersectionality is not an opinion but rather a very useful way to embrace the complexity of lived realities and hopefully change them to the better. So to sum it up, why intersectional feminism, feminism is needed? This is one of the questions we will touch, up, uh, touch upon today. 
The input of Peggy Pesha will last 30 minutes. And afterwards, I invite you to participate in the discussion and um, to, to write your um, question in the Q&A chat. Please just, you see it and in the, you, you see it um, down uh, like on the bottom line of your screen, uh, a, a little button called Q&A. So just put your question there and then I will try to give my very best to consider all the questions. But given the fact that it seems like that we are uh, 150 participants I think um, we will, we will, um, we will not, we can't consider everything, but the most possible. So um, last but not least, um, please note that we will not tolerate discriminatory comments. Now, Peggy, I'm very glad to pass on the microphone to you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Ines, for this very kind introduction. Um, also from me, a um, very warm welcome to everybody in this uh, young uh, autumn afternoon evening that you joined us for uh, what I hope will become a, a lively discussion. Um, yes, yeah, so I will try, uh, no, I will try, I will do that. Uh, we'll uh, share my uh, screen with you. And also we are becoming more and more um, experts in the virtual realm. I'm pretty sure we will run into some problems. So please bear with me. Um, and it already starts. So I have to do that again. So we had a test run um, and in the test run, um, it did work and um, well, just do it again, I mean. Yes, I will do that again. So this is always, of course, I think it is what, what they call Murphy's Law, what we have now. So yeah, you can see that, right? Let me try. Yes, so no, we are okay. Perfect. It works for, for, for now, <laughs> yeah. So as uh, um, you already uh, pointed out, Ines, um, the most important question uh, today for me will also be why intersectionality? And not so much what, inter what is in intersectionality? Because it's, it's a lot being said about it. There's tons of literature out there. Um, and um, this is not supposed to be a more dry or boring introduction in a theory. But I do want to say a couple of things beforehand um, to also clear up um, what intersectionality is uh, to me and um, uh, uh, from how, from where I am approach that. So it is um, in, in, in the first extent it is uh, uh, coming from a collective experience uh, rather than uh, an actual theory. So it turned into a theory and also, uh, well, theory seems to be that we shy away a little bit from it, um, but it, it, it was actually being uh, uh, formulated into a tool, into a method which can help us um, articulating this very experiences where this actually is coming from. Um, so um, it became a critical, it was turned into a critical tool um, and uh, uh, not so much as we are negotiating it de these days as a theoretical concept, which uh, already implies a little bit also it's not really okay, but it impl implies a little bit that there is a sneaky door out, out there. So if I'm not so much into theory, I can say, whoa, this is really a theoretical concept. I have nothing to do with it. No, it's not. It is a, a life experience. It is, re it is based and, and, and built upon uh, life experiences uh, where people um, also not to be uh, exaggerating here, but also uh, lost their life qualities and to a certain extent also their lives uh, directly. So it makes sense to look into and to bother with intersectionality. Um, if you want to um, continue and, and get some reading on, I mean, as I said, there's tons out there, 
But um, this is, of course, shamelessly, I will uh, um, um, advertise this here, um, the uh, publication uh, which um, the uh, Gunda Werner Institute uh, brought out uh, uh, last year. Um, Reach everyone on the planet, um, Kimberly Crenshaw and intersectionality. And this also is um, an approach which uh, uh, shows you the different perspectives and why intersectionality matters to them. So in uh, this spirit, um, the remainder of the time, I actually want to talk um, uh, more uh, uh, on a personal approach. Um, so I will just walk you through what intersectionality means for me also in, a, in, a in my daily work life. Um, and uh, uh, Ines already said it, um, very clearly, it's not an uh, uh, opinion, and I would uh, even go one more, uh, one step further and say, it's not an option. So intersectionality is actually um, what saves me every day and will inform my uh, my work, my 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 view on the world, um, my uh, uh, analysis, and also how I pr how I look at the world and how I bring myself uh, to the world. Um, yeah, this is another little reference from Kimberly Crenshaw. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, a more an American history U.S. approach, but that also could help you um, to uh, uh, understand the entanglements of um, inequality. So it's a, it's on YouTube. Uh, it's a five-minute um, uh, little video. So we are not going to uh, uh, watch this here. So why intersectionality? Well, um, I would say first. Uh, of all, um, to um, uh, uh, to 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 get a grip on the voids uh, we are dealing with um, every day, which are in plain sight. Um, you all know, uh, and we all heard it thousands of times, and use it also <laughs> thousands of times. For example, this notion: uh, women and other minorities. Um, which is actually already an approach like, oh, we are intersectional, we are working intersectional, we are thinking intersectional. So we have, we, we are aware of the different boxes. Well, not so much um, because uh, we are not living and we are not incorporating boxes. We are incorporating different categories um, of, uh, or categories of differences. But the moment we box them or the moment we put them in, into a, uh, uh, a pyramid, um, um, we're getting lost in that, basically. So um, intersectionality is, um, is a helpful tool for us to see, you know, when we get this, this, this certain moments of, there's something off here, something is missing, or, or it, just some conversations uh, in the meeting uh, don't come together for myself, for example, um, then this will help. So um, i just give you an example. I, uh, I, I was on a, a business trip uh, yesterday um, for the uh, Bundeszentrale for the Federal Agency. Um, we are about to extend our uh, um, locations also to East Germany which is really important. And as we were there yesterday, um, uh, it was very much uh, welcomed and people were like, yes, we, we are looking forward to work with you. Um, and uh, so one of the most important parts is um, how do we actually tackle 30 years after unification, um, these memories of, of transformation. And um, because what we are dealing with when we, when we talk about this, this uh, 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 narratives, um, we are negotiating a past um, in, in order to construct something in, in, in the present. Um, interestingly, um, the actual memories and uh, um, uh, experiences, collective experiences of, uh, of the East were rather uh, marginalized on these tables where we talked about it. So there were actually only um, the other person and myself who also introduced uh, us um, in this rounds with our um, experiences being, um, being socialized in the East. And, um, and later on in the conversations, we saw that yes, it does matter. When we think about what do we have to do, how do we tackle that? And we are always coming back like, um, well, 
maybe we need to go to the people and ask them actually what they want because they are not on the table right now. And this is one of the most important voids with, uh, which uh, intersectionality brings to light, that it means in, in the first place to make space for the perspectives who are not, which are not on the table. Um, so, and, and, and when, once it is not being made a space, then it becomes a little awkward in the sense. So while I am um, a black queer, uh, um, activist and academic um, who is uh, strongly believing and, and, and enthusiastic about political education um, and I was uh, born and raised and, and uh, uh, socialized in, in, the, in the East and I'm bringing all of this to, to the table and I'm articulating it and I'm bringing it, um, I'm, I'm giving it vo a voice to it. That means that these different, these different categories, all of these what informs me and what informs my, my uh, standpoint from where I look at the, the world um, are articulated in the room. Um, if the rest of the room um, just says, well, they're just here, <laughs> then we are missing a lot, which is actually the fo foil or the matrix of the, uh, uh, um, the, the normative approach. So everybody basically thinks about um, Germany as in the sense of West Germany. In um, uh, and uh, uh, w once we would even articulate that, then it would, you know, recenter our perspectives. Then we would look around the, the table and say, oh, wow, that actually means something if we have 90%, let's say, from Nordrhein-Westfalen or so, but we are now here in Thuringia or so. So it is actually something positive. It's not like, oh, um, it's, it's pointing fingers or marking. No, it's actually dealing with the marking which we have, uh, which we are doing every, every, every day. And it literally makes you better brief. I'm, I deeply believe that. So because it is, um, uh, um, it shows people who are being mar marginalized, the, the more they have the, the way of being able to articulate um, their intersectional uh, uh, approaches, um, the more they can breathe and the more they can bring their uh, um, life experiences to, to the table. Um, and uh, this is, for example, in, in, in one of my uh, projects right now, um, uh, uh, becomes also more obvious. Um, Ines, you already um, pointed out to the discussions about the pandemic and, 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 and feminist approach to the pandemic. Um, I'm uh, developing a project right now, uh, which I called uh, post-pandemic futures. Um, and uh, the idea I get uh, for that was um, basically in, um, uh, when, when I noticed that we are trying to make sense of something really new with the same language and concepts from the pre-pandemic time. And that means, uh, first of all, it's, it's probably problem, uh, uh, not very helpful if we don't develop new languages and tools, but also it means that we look at certain uh, um, collectives of, of, of certain countries and communities in the same way. But yet, um, there, are, there, there, there is a lot of experiences out, out there uh, to deal with a state of emergencies, with uh, emergency responses. Um, so uh, uh, there are uh, communities out there, they are in, 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 in a state of emergency for more than 30 years or even longer. So they know how to deal with that. They also, it, it, not only they know how to deal with, with these uh, situations, but they develop strategies for for future, because these are literally survival uh, strategies. And while we were talking about a lot of solidarity and, and reaching out, um, we never thought about um, what it actually means for uh, uh, societies, for communities, which we usually see as um, being in a state of crisis. Right now, the Western world is in a complete state of crisis. Um, 
um, which we negotiating rather to you know to put the uh, uh, the code of normalcy on it uh, uh, back on it. Um, but um, and and we are still stumbling uh, or struggling with uh, the perception of the global south. And actually, what I noticed at least is that we are rather stumbling than actually having an, a, a constructive idea um, how to deal with that, because um, everything what we used to to perce uh, uh, to perceive and, 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 and negotiate the, the global south as uh, the state of uh, a, a crisis is kind of shifting. And it would be really good to go a, a step further and again, you know, to look at the world um, through an intersectional lenses. And that means to see um, uh, where are actually these voices and these agencies which are dealing with the same global crisis right now, but in a different way, because this is what a pandem pandemic means. Um, it affects all of us, but it affects us diff differently. But all what we are looking to is the same in, in the way um, as we did it before. Um, so um, here's a, just a, 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 a quick slide um, uh, referring to um, how we usually look at, at, at this, this differences and then we are going to one of these box and developing uh, the narrative on this uh, uh, further. So uh, with regard to uh, uh, what I just said with post-pandemic futures, we would look into, well, this category of, of race and then um, uh, applying the same tools which we, which we usually do. But um, um, actually, uh, well, I did, yeah, this is better. But um, an intersectional approach um, actually works in a different way. And this is um, some of my colleagues from um, an, uh, a Berlin organization um, uh, on, 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 on coaching and psychological help, uh, Les Micras, they came up with this idea to demonstrate how intersectionality uh, works also embodied, so how it is embodied in, in, in all of us. It is not so much in these boxes where we can then say, well, women and other uh, um, minorities, but um, rather it, it affects uh, all the other uh, categories and um, uh, how it is embodied in, in, in us. So um, I'm never just, just quote unquote, uh, a woman. Um, I am uh, 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 deeply affected by being a black, queer, uh, 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 gender non-conforming uh, uh, woman, Sternchen, uh, 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 asterisk, um, being socialized and raised uh, in East Germany. So, and all of that, there's not a part here or a part here, so, but it is all that together. Um, I want to bring us back if I can, you know, if I'm in, in time a little bit more. I think you have 10, around about 10. 10, 10 more minutes, yeah? Okay, um, so then I want to bring us back to that uh, um, slide here as uh, in, the, in, in the sense of normalcy or norm. Um, so why intersectionality um, is not an option um, and uh, uh, actually a necessity um, as you see here, this is uh, um, a slide I took uh, many, many years ago uh, in, in New Jersey, advertising for a political education uh, program, which was active in, in, in the US in, from the 1950s. And it says everybody deserves to be treated equally. Um, it doesn't matter if you're black or yellow or brown or normal. Um, I want to, want to shorten that whole thing the point here is that all of us, and I can't see how many, we are 196 people for now, all of us do understand this. None of us here will ha have seriously doubts about what, uh, uh, what is meant by uh, these boxes here. Um, and that's the problem all of us, including me, that is a problem. The moment when I was actually about, I wanted to, to uh, hit an, um, a grocery store and, um, and, and it stuck with me in my side eye. Um, and uh, I was deeply shocked when I, uh, not morally shocked, I was shocked that I understood this whole thing. 
So this is how it works when we do not apply um, intersectionality if we are not using it, it as, a, as an, an, a tool to understand these voids. Um, Maybe if I can, um, sure. I just quickly, sorry for the interruption, but there came a question um, up already um, okay. regarding your notion of void. Um, why you, um, it's not just empty spaces, but why are the dots in between? Maybe you can just quickly refer to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so it, it was a little bit a fancy thing, which I did, you know, to highlight something. So how do you highlight with exclamation mark? It's a little bit lame. Um, but it is indeed, as you say, Ines, it's not just an empty space. Because void, I was thinking about this, this notion of voids for a long time. And I'm still not thought that through. But what it, what it certainly is, it's, it's, it's a complex thing and it's also a dilemma. Because actually these voids are very real life realities. It, 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 it's literally lives. So um, if we come back to my uh, um, own examples, uh, or, or examples from, from my own uh, uh, work life, you know, um, uh, we, we do, uh, uh, people were on the table but the narratives of our experiences were not on the table. So, and of course we are both uh, um, uh, 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 pre pretty lively there. So, you know, we can take space, we can hold space and we can articulate also our uh, life experiences. And yet the, um, the, the uh, hegemonic narrative, which was in the room, didn't respect, res, uh, uh, represent um, our uh, uh, life reality. So, and that means basically our lives were the voids. And even in the sa very spaces of East Germany, we were even there. So it's not, but, but the conversations were pretty much um, uh, similar to conversations I could have in, in, in West Berlin or in West, in, in West Germany. So it is regardless of the space where we are, and it's not really regardless of the people who are in the room, but we even create these voids while we have ex um, perspectives uh, uh, in the room. If we never, and that is what this, this slide here shows us, if we never talk about the whiteness in the room, then, all the people who are not, who, who are clearly already being marked as not, not white, um, become or going into this strange thing of the void. And once it is important, it has been dragged back, back uh, 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 to the light or in, in plain sight and being then numbered as we also know that, oh, we are diverse. We have a lot of the diversity here. And then we are starting to number out uh, 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 the, the people we're actually meaning with, with diversity. So that means um, we have a normative narrative and a normative approach in the room, which is usually not being spoken about or spoken of. And that creates this void. So that was a little bit what I tried with this dots. But I have to say it was just to make it, it apparently it worked, you know, so thank yeah, you for, <laughs> for thinking about the dots, <laughs> um, whoever uh, put this question in. So, um, yeah, Ines? Maybe just ask if, if, if I mean, I was listening to you, like, like um, you're saying, okay, like this is a multi-perspective, like bring a new perspective on the table, but for you it's very important to say, okay, this is not optional. But from a cynical perspective, which is the normal perspective, which is uh, making um, diverse um, perspectives um, invisible, um, it's still not clear why it is um, a necessity. I mean, we like from a Western wh white perspective, we were quite good in creating these, these voids and, and making the thing and making other perspectives in, invisible. So why would you say now or not now or in general, um, the game is over? 
-hmm. you cannot continue like that anymore. Well, uh, um, I, I I do have to apply the uh, um, the the idea of that we want to change the um, our our society for the better. And uh, certainly as feminists, I mean, I just, uh, I, I hope that we are still in that struggle to say, you know, how do we come to a more inclusive and a more just um, uh, a society? How do we change our contracts of, of uh, society? And, and that's where I would say, I mean, if, if, if the answer is no, then um, I actually, we can stop here. And so, so this is <laughs> what is the, uh, um, of, of, of course, what is uh, uh, um, the condition for it. But then um, uh, on this condition, on this ground, um, there is a lot also for, uh, at, at stake for, um, um, for uh, uh, people and, and perspectives who come and are uh, embedded in, uh, to the norm and not an, a, a normalcy. Um, because it, it, it also does wear, wear you out, you are worn out when you're just from that says, that's what I want to do and I do already a lot and we do all, already a lot and then the frustration is kicking in. Like, oh, uh, uh, why is this a problem again? Uh, well, uh, um, intersectionality, as I said before, helps us to, um, to be able to better breathe and to widen all of our perspectives. But that requires the necessity um, to, uh, um, to, yeah, to scrutinize um, the, the, um, uh, the path that we are we're walking on. If everything is a danger and a threat to us, then well, it's also we can stop it. But if if we really want if want to have change, then it's better to look uh, uh, around us and to ask ourselves, uh, who is missing here? Who has not been heard? Because I cannot speak for everybody. You know, um, uh, Ines, we went through that when we started to think about um, the uh, gala on, on intersectionality. And we had these moments, these collective moments of frustrations. Like we were there, we had a, a cool idea and a lot of passion. And we run in, in all of these questions like, who, who, who is not here? And um, okay, uh, uh, for whom do we not speak? And can we actually uh, uh, solve this problem, you know? We can do so it technically. Words, hmm? So maybe in other words, in intersectionality, what, um, because this is also a question already coming up, it's not just a negative term, but is, is, is a perspective, is an instrument to, to, um, to make offers to people normally forgotten um, or, um, or okay. marginalized or can, silent. Yeah, can I say something about that? Because, yeah, so two things. One, yes, it is not a negative term. It's actually, it's the opposite. It's a positive one. It's, it's actually, it's a cheering tool for, for what we actually want. And it is also a corrective tool. And a corrective tool is a good thing. You know, that's what we always need in learning processes. You know? If we wouldn't have that, we would all be in the stage of a four months old or so. But so we, we are used a lot of these corrective tools because um, it's not to foreground people who are forgotten because that already centers the, uh, 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 the norm. But it is to give space to perspectives I don't have literally, you know, an idea about. And that eases the room in a different way. It's not like, you know, it, that's the, uh, 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 the difference between, you know, like, like approaching an and, and allyship versus toler toleration. Um, it's not about, you know, to tolerate something or to tell something, oh yeah, we forgot you for, for quite a while, um, but to, to really, to, to make space to perspectives where not uh, um, uh, on the table. That is uh, the thing. And it really helps um, for, for everybody. I am on, 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 in this one working group where we are developing for, for uh, one foundation, um, a new approach um, 
on uh, um, how to say that in, in English, the, their, their funding strategy, their criteria for funding. Mm -hmm. They want to di uh, diversify their criteria for funding. So we had a whole day on working on that last, last week. And then we came up with a slogan. And, and, and the slogan was like, yeah, we, we could call it now, hashtag now we are remembering. You know, with the emphasis on we. Now we are remembering, you know. Um, and, uh, uh, and I was so happy and I thought, wow, you know, in my old years now I can, can, can come up with something really cool, which hopefully will attract young people. Beyond the point that we need young people to actually see whether, you know, uh, this is cool. Um, but there was um, a, 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 a colleague and good friend and, 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 and a, a sister in struggle uh, from me, um, um, uh, also in this working group, who said, you know, I have a lot of problems with this now. Now we are remembering. Because for our community, we are remembering for 70 freaking years, you know, mm -hmm. just because the mainstream doesn't hear us doesn't mean we are not there. If we are not say, now saying, now we are remembering, um, we are reproducing exactly that, you know, and we are coming to people who are actually doing that just uh, uh, um, because we are learning it now. So this is also lift and, and actually life intersectionality because for all of this in the room, it was possible to change this um, to make it more inclusive for more people, also attractive. Um, I get a signal, so I should shut up. Or yeah, um, also, no, 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 absolutely not. But you know, I'm I'm already see like in the Q and A, so many people want to participate in in in, in our talk, and I think we should also give the, the questions enough space. So maybe if you come to the conclusion, I would- Absolutely, be... absolutely, yeah. I like that also much more to get into a direct uh, conversation. So with this couple of examples, um, I just want to point to that intersectionality is a commitment, you know. It is um, something which actually you should uh, uh, develop a, a truly felt, um, uh, a passion for it because it helps you know it was it was blowing my mind when i thought wow this is so true and i'm working with this community um in 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 solidarity for many years and i thought you are absolutely right but this is just not my life re reality um and i was so glad uh, we could be both uh, on the table or in the room um that we could enlarge on that you know so it means intersectionality for, for uh, political work and political education to understand these higher risks of structural discrimination for certain groups. And that we do not understand it if we just, you know, marking them again, you know, like um, that is what whiteness does to mark the other but doesn't mark itself. And to go into processes of destigmatization. So again, as a commitment, that means to always have that in the mind, you know, like how is st structural discrimination working then that um, it re-stigmatize certain groups. And it means to recenter the role of the institution, you know, not the institution is nothing uh, uh, um, objective or neutral or uh, um, uh, uh, the, the very source of all knowledge, you know. Very often when we, when we actually were, you know, and get, uh, asked for uh, uh, workshops and seminars um, to go, uh, you know, to, to, to start and, and to proceed uh, um, uh, processes of the diversi div uh, diversification in, in uh, um, institutions, the institutions themselves feel like or think they can stay intact and it's something which you just add on. It's not what you add on. It's actually, it's not a quick fix. It's actually really looking at the own institution and to change that. And finally, you know, the focus on the participation of these uh, uh, groups um, uh, and that uh, uh, literally lowers barriers, you know, um, by scrutinizing our knowledge, by always thinking, where do we get that from, you know? 
and does it represent everybody? Is it is it is it really the same for everybody? You know, and it probably the answer will probably be no. Thank you very much, Peggy. Um, sorry if I again give you a sign Hold regarding the, the clock. Sorry for that. Um, so I, I'd like to like like now go immediately to the to the Q and A um, because there's one question: um, how do, um, um, how do we prevent intersectionality as a tool, as you mentioned it, um, in in order to be instrumentalized by identity politics? So maybe. I'd it's, it's one of the criticism we always have to deal with when it comes to intersectionality. That might be also the fear of identity politics, um, one of the obstacles why it's still not implemented as much as needed. So maybe you can explore a little bit or just give some hints. I know it's a huge field to the problem yeah. of identity politics or the critique it, it might turn into identity politics. Well, it would be, I think, a whole other evening um, to talk about, you know, um, uh, um, the pro and con of uh, identity politics, you know. Um, I think the, just, just to complicate the whole notion, um, uh, uh, white spaces keeping themselves white is identity politics. So just to, to complicate this whole idea of not to put it again, you know, to mark certain uh, collective identities and say, you know, this is the problem of uh, uh, um, identity politics. Um, but to say, see, you know, what we are seeing, what's going on in the US uh, over the last four years is certainly identity politics of, of, of whiteness, you know. So um, it is more, more complex in, 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 in this way. Um, that uh, intersectionality is not being used or um, uh, uh, yeah, deflated in the sense, you know, that is a problem we always have with, um, with critical tools that um, the uh, uh, well, um, the the norm and, uh, and 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 the center of the power can suck up everything and basically you know chew it up and and uh, um, uh, uh, spit it out again and then uh, it 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 um, it loses a certain power. But um, by uh, looking at um, the very you know the 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 structure itself and not just um, applying it as an add-on, then I think that is a, a good way to stay in the process of using uh, uh, intersectionality as a critical tool. Um, what I mean with that is, you know, what we very often see, it, 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 it's again, it's not boxes, you know, um, um, intersectionality is, is very often already uh, uh, or needs to be a part when we talk about diversity. And um, diversity is being seen as something, um, as I already said, we have this diversity and then we are counting numbers, you know. Um, no, it means it's an institution or we, we as um, an, a movement, are we doing that, you know, are we, and, and doing would be to diversify our knowledge, to diversify our spaces and open that up to, um, uh, 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 yeah, to, to give space in our institutions and, and very, yeah, and also um, do we have people in there as well? Um, when you, like, when you're talking about changing on decentralizing the, the center and also this applies to institutions and this is changing the power game as it is normally played. Um, um, you are now um, working in a very um, powerful institution um, for civic education. Um, it is funded by the Ministry of Interior. A clear, like the, our Minister of Interior um, is a clear enemy of feminism, is a clear enemy of, um, of, of anti-racism, um, put it mildly. So um, how do you how do you, um, um, what is your experience is being in the center of the power with this, bringing this formally or still marginalized perspective there and, and you have now in, in your situation or in your position and um, as being a member of this civic education institution, you can set, you have some possibilities to set the new normal. 
So uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I, if, if I have either the power or if I actually uh, um, want to go there to, to set a new normal. But, um, but, but of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. Um, uh, it is different to work from, in, f f uh, from the inside of an institution. And um, while we are uh, indeed uh, belonging to um, the minister, uh, 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 Ministry uh, of the Interior, we are also, as an um, agency for political education, um, uh, uh, have a position of um, reaching out and uh, actually also represent, re represent um, the whole society. And this is exactly uh, um, where I'm trying to, to also uh, uh, kick in here. So um, what I'm trying to do is to use, you know, uh, political, also political educational strategies um, in, in, my, in my work to foreground um, uh, uh, perspectives, uh, uh, PUC and black perspectives um, uh, um, in my work, because what intersectionality uh, uh, um, taught me um, in, in this realm is also to see and to understand um, that uh, these uh, communities and groups also have a right of political education. They are not only always uh, um, the, the, the tool of, you know, uh, uh, working on uh, diversity or um, doing, you know, uh, coming up with ideas or being, you know, the identified patients. Um, so uh, 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 Black people and PUC uh, uh, collectives um, are a, a part of uh, the diverse uh, um, society uh, we live in. And, uh, Every uh, people uh, in in this country have a right on this uh, uh, to to receive political education. So this is one stra uh, strategy. Which I'm also applying to other minorities. Say again. Uh, which also applies to other minorities. Uh, which also other applies minorities. to other groups. Absolutely. Uh, um, absolutely. Yeah. And it also goes together with recentering knowledge. So literally, it's not a theoretical thing what I'm talking about, but literally to to um, to uh, basically yeah to put another perspective to recenter the knowledge we are working with, and that at least it um, it changes the norm as we know it. If, if we are working on a different new normal, I, I don't know yet, but it changes the norm as, as we know it. Um, because we all know that when we are um, in need of uh, writing some qualification stuff, then um, which, which is the knowledge which is being, you know, being held as representative and um, other sources where you actually um, have to, to fight for or to um, actually explain yourself why you're using that, you know. So um, recentering knowledge is, is a very important part. You know. And um, what helps me, of course, is my um, experience and my my um, my my living in um, the uh, uh, also collective experience of uh, black feminist thought, because um, they literally started that, you know, by having, you know, uh, for example, kitchen table conversations. There is so much knowledge, you know. Uh, being produced there, you know, uh, st uh, struggles being theorized, um, uh, 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 living uh, uh, um, experiences being passed on, you know, which was ridiculous, uh, ridiculed in um, uh, in other uh, 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 circumstances and in other uh, um, areas. Uh, but um, just also to see how um, uh, uh, these various, I will call them, um, hanged in there and and and. And, um, actually did their work that also inspires me a lot. So one of the um, up, like repeated question is, so um, what are the main obstacles that this richness is not embraced as it should? Um, um, and maybe you can also, um, like, um, because there's a question, so why, 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 what are the main obstacles you see yeah. for the implementation for the yeah. And richness um, um, of, of our knowledge and maybe you can also link it to the question of privileges. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what was exactly where I was 
going there because yeah 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 uh, you're, you're absolutely right the main obstacle is basically our entanglement our entanglement in in in, in power relations we are all in, in, in entangled um when i go somewhere you know as a representative of uh, uh, my agency there is a certain uh, uh, expectation and there's also a certain um experience uh, um how you know what kind of stuff is coming out of my mouth or should come out of of, of uh, the mouth of somebody working there you know how we do something you know how, how our formats are um and to to recenter this to think differently to speak differently you know um that that is what what change it is but that's also an obstacle we are all being formed and conditioned in in this society um to uh yeah to make ourselves uh, literally uh, uh comprehensible um, and to be com comprehensible as we are in this space here as well requires a certain way of speaking, a certain way of language. And I don't mean English now, also is, this is a part of it. Um, and to, to go against that, what we say, what is the ratio or um, the, the, uh, uh, the objective or the, the universal approach, you know. Um, to really stay with um, uh, life realities and go back to that, you know, to, em uh, to embrace that, to emphasize this. Um, that is an obstacle you have to take, you know, and also it's, it's a process and to hang in there and it's, it's for a long run. So maybe one last question um, from the Q&A. Um, someone is, um, is asking um, Lukas Schucht, um, does, does this intersectionality um, approach also um, applies for anti-Semitism, which is, plays also an important role in, in Germany, or are there other things that needed to be added in order to fight anti-Semitism? Um, I think we, we should take an um, intersectional approach to, um, to, ev to every as aspect of our daily lives and of, of our uh, 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 lives, you know, um, uh, social, social contracts. Um, by, by, by having said this uh, means, well, uh, yes, also when we certainly in, in, in Germany are negotiating uh, uh, anti-Semitism and, and looking into how to deal with that, um, and how to fight it, that we also need an intersectional approach. Um, it's not just um, that, uh, um, or, or at least this is my, uh, um, my take on that, that we are still very much in a very West, West German wide narrative of uh, fighting anti-Semitism. Um, and I think we will be, um, uh, um, it, it would be much more, uh, not only successful, but um, uh, uh, um, in a better way to fight this, which is very necessary to, to fight uh, anti-Semitism. If we take an uh, intersectional approach to bring um, uh, other perspectives on, on the table and to see um, uh, uh, there is not one way and certainly not this, this West German uh, um, uh, uh, narrative, which can, you know, be uh, um, reproduced over the next gen uh, generations. And maybe to add, I mean, that, that, mm -hmm. the, that the standard we have um, regarding, for example, anti-Semitism amongst others is that it's not working the new attacks um, on mosques. I mean, there were, has been continuously uh, attacks on, on graveyards, on Jewish graveyards and on, exactly. on synagogues, ongoing, ongoing. And now it's getting even worse. So right. um, um, this also, this situation shows that there is no way to just, to, uh, there's no way of like more of the same. I mean, if we not, 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 not acknowledge the, the, the danger for this minority, for the Jewish, in, given the, the situation or given the history of Germany, um, um, I, I think it's, it's more than needed to get rid of this Western, West German um, narrative. And actually there is a new narrative coming up. So there is also like, and it's not mainstream of course, but like the, um, 
the construction of the the Jewish Muslim leading culture is is one of the approach more playful approaches, but I think very 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 precious, in order to to challenge the one and only Western Western German um, narrative when it comes to anti-Semitism that we made it so well we. Right. Yes, and 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 that links back to it that um, we need to see, you know, um, also to understand it's a critical tool for all of us. It 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 is not like you know that um, the 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 norm or the center is doing something for the other. It's actually to to um, an inventory uh, to our uh, to to the to the norm and to the center as well. As you said, you know, for seventy years. Um, we see it's not really working, you know. Um, so, and uh, um, we can have some lame excuses to say, well, it's it's a problem coming from the outside or from the East Germans, you know. Um, something might not work. So um, that means, or, or something really doesn't work. So we might as well, you know, um, uh, scrutinize what we uh, what 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 was the normative approach. Um, and uh, 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 change this and, and open that up for, for other perspectives. Peggy Fischer, I think we are, we are now approaching the end. I, uh, I want to- That was really you. quick. Yes, yes, this is the format. Yeah. <laughs> One hour, intense. Um, I would like to thank you very much for your insight, why it is um, a political strategy, which is not option, but necessary. And of course, I would also like to thank all the audience. We were so happy that so many participants uh, made it possible to be with us in this one hour. Thank you very much for your questions. I'm sorry if I, that I could not pick, all, or pick up all of them. Please um, forgive me. And I hope we see you again in the next session. We are doing what it is, um, um, feminist explorations once a month. And, um, so please check in um, we will announce it um, early enough and would be happy to meet all again and um, now i wish us uh, the, a good evening and that we can build on a feminist solidarity um, in europe and beyond thank you very much thank you thank you